Good afternoon, morning, middle of the day, or maybe 15 years from now, who knows, everybody. Um, do I've been doing like a lot of these books I'm about to do, I could probably just give them their own video to be honest, maybe I still will, I don't know. Um, I've been doing like, okay, five X-Men books, five Star Wars books. Um, I just wanna take a look at uh, five alt comics and stuff that I've just recently read. I'm just gonna call them that. I'm not sure what else to call them. Uh, the truth is, is that they just don't fit in like a regular corporate comic convention, but they're all very different, so. Uh, first is Moam. This is a older issue. I mean, Moam is old in general. This is from winter uh, 2011. So this I got in, in San Diego while I was at a bookstore looking at their graphic novel section. And, you know, I, I could be hit or miss on these when they're cheap. I don't think this one was, this one was cheap enough. I mean, it's, it was only 15 bucks back when, so I mean, I think I still paid like eight bucks for it or something. Um, but I did see, you know, if I see, oh, uh, artists I, I cared about recently, there are a couple of names. Dash Shaw was in here, but I mean, I opened it up and see what his was. It was very short. Uh, what I really, guys, guess wanted was this T. Edward Back comic here, which we'll get to. And um, yeah, so you know, then you flip, then you sort of do this little flip through, go, oh, eh, no, eh, maybe, maybe, eh, eh, and okay. And for me, whenever I do something like this, the main thing I'm looking for is how different does it look as I flip through it? And at least in that sense, it passes the test, right? Like, okay, I got a lot of stuff to think about and compare and, and read uh, as a whole, even though they are individual, separate, unrelated stories. Um, uh, except for the fact that the editor thought they'd be good in this issue of Moam. So I guess we could flip through. I mean, some of these, they're good art, but okay, you know, are they for me? This was like funny little sort of imaginary friend uh, comic. I can't remember if this was, yeah, this is lived on its, this lived on its own. Some of these feel strippy, like a comic strip, even though obviously it's three pages. Uh, you know, it was cute, and it was like, you know, maybe maybe not what I would started with. And then over here we have uh, the White Rhinoceros. Now this book uh, is, I think it's a con it's a continuing book or a continuing story. And uh, even though it was, I I still liked it. I, I especially like the colors, for whatever reason. I think using these kind of bright colors is probably the more interesting choice. I mean, they still, even when they're showing night, it still feels very vibrant. I got it to be continued. I'll probably never continue it, um, but I didn't mind it. So normally seeing Dash Sean, one of these would have been uh, one of the reasons I would have grabbed it, but this is really the Dash Shaw, Shaw that we get. Um, this was a, this was okay. I remember thinking that this was okay. And then, and I mean, I like the page. I like the pictures and the drawings and stuff. Whatever's going on there, they're almost in a world here um, where there isn't much gravity because they can float. I don't know what they're doing there. These were funny. In fact, I want to reread these because I read um, this uh, Barack Hussein Obama. This is de definitely a, a strip. Maybe not a strip like this, but a strip in four panels. And uh, I read this in, in the car after I bought it. And then, you know, the rest of Moam I read recently when I went to uh, Poland and took it on the plane. So I would reread these. These are funny. What's what's really funny about this is that this is, you know, it sort of plays on um, uh, not a decrepit, but a sort of old man, Biden. And this is them doing this in 2011, right? Of course, um, uh, you know, one of the favorite sleight of hands currently conservatives do is just talk about how old he is or, or whatever. Um, or how he says silly things, uh, but he does it here. So it's one of those things that I think people would have thought were funny in 2011, and now they would, uh, you know, they would think it's funny for a different reason because it sort of reinforces their <laughs> their ideas of Biden. But then again, here's something that a cartoonist thought in 2011, right? And that's 12 years ago. So and who knows? And these were probably all written before, way long before 2011, because there's a lot of them in here. Uh, but they, they crack me up. So this is like Barack Obama and there's a lot of uh, Joe Biden here and they were all very, very funny and very weird. Um, this feels like, I couldn't tell if this was a continuing story. Um, you know, obviously has hate vibes in it. I can't remember who did it. Let's find out who it is. Uh, Nothing Eve Part 9, obviously. So Kurt Wolfgang. I don't know Kurt Wolfgang. Um, sometimes I'm not sure if I'm also watching this UFC London card right now, so 
If there's a knockout, I might have to pause it to watch it and turn it up. Um, you know, and this story was this story was fine. It's not. It's one of those things that I didn't mind or I liked. I I would read it if I were in a reading club or someone asked me to review it or or have like a talk about it. But it's not something I I, I generally go right towards. I mean, hate is the same way to me. Um, this this was beautiful. Um, you know, it wasn't a like heavily plotted or anything like that. It was just some beautiful work. Afraid of the dark by uh, Sarah Edward Corbett. I'm glad I did this video because I would have forgotten about this. I remember reading it and thinking, okay, I gotta uh, find more by her. And to me, you know, not whatever much was going on here, um, you know, it's mostly just movement and sort of weird things and fun things to draw. Uh, it's it's definitely, um, you know, it's definitely a story in the sense that things are happening panel to panel. Um, but I just thought this was beautiful, so. I will have to look up uh, to see if I get anything else from her, Sarah Edward, Edward Corbett. Some of these names I feel like I should know, and I don't. But I would I would have recognized this um, this style of art here. So, and then uh, it's almost like a Toy Story thing, except the objects in your house go and go have fun and frolic, and then they come back and they're everything's back to normal. So. Can't, can't say that I read all of them because I skipped the hell out of this this one. I'm going to flip back and forth here so I can remember who it is. So I'm sorry, Nicholas Mahler. Uh, Mahler. The, you know, this, I read one or two pages of this and it was just not appealing. Um, and I don't want... You, when something's so simple and you want to put too many words in it, I mean, I think we just need to figure out how to make it into a short story or something. And then I start flipping this way. I'm getting the feeling now. So maybe this is great. Someone tell me it was great, that I should have read it. It would have opened my eyes. But um, this just looks, it just looked tedious to me. So I completely and utterly skipped it. Uh, the Cozy Apocalypse was very cool. This is from uh, Tom Kaczynski, who I've also uh, heard or read in the past. Um, uh, and I, I'm not even really sure what happened towards the end here. But it was an extremely entertaining comic, um, you know, especially with panel layouts and stuff. And I think we need more of this type of talent, um, uh, or at least style, in the uh, in the alt comics world. Although I'm not saying that, you know, if I ever wanted to do a comic, it would probably look like this. But I would make it a point not to do this, you know. You know, like if, if you can't draw, <laughs> then... You know, you have to be expressive with it still and not a not try to cover it up with a bunch of words. But yeah, just beautiful. Even just the way the even just the way the panel structure worked and stuff. Um I don't know that I got the end, like some apocalypse sort of happens in a real short story and it turns out it didn't happen. Uh if I remember correctly, I thought, oh maybe he got a divorce and that's what it felt like or something like that, or they were breaking up. I'm not sure. Uh nonetheless I really enjoyed it. Something I probably could read again. Um if I just grabbed it off of the shelf or something like that. Mutant was also very good. Um, obviously, this has some Charles Burns vibes. I wouldn't say same amount of skill. In fact, when I was reading this, and I enjoyed it and I liked it, you know, let's call it like, you know, mixtape level kind of stuff. Actually, I'll use that in a different video about all comics, that uh, that illusion, so I'll hold it here. But um, I think reading this made me realize, like, how good that, maybe that art that Charles Burns is doing in... Uh, in black hole is actually you know and there's nothing wrong with this it was cool and it was interesting um but same sort of vibe same sort of uh you know body language even and obviously with the the strong blacks and stuff like that so um man this one was uh this was a very dark story and uh i still loved it though it's hard to say whether it was a revenge story or whether it was a wacky story some one of these is getting revenge i mean it was just really weird and something that interests me enough that I would probably need to read it again. So this is John Adams. That's good. After uh, being the president, he started he started uh, cartooning. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, kid dies within the second page. Might as well show you this. This sequence is wonderful, you know. And as dark as it was, this dad was going to hunt this thing anyway, and now he's going to now he's hunting it and trying to get revenge. Chases it, you know. And as dark as it was, you get this real. I mean, that's super dark, you know. Um, or it's like really he did it. So, uh, 
this is, you know, to me, this one gave me the feeling that other people get with like Ido and Umez or whatever. And uh, I don't get it with them. I just think that art is cool. This to me is very dark, whatever's going on. He's, he's hunting anyway, and now it's revenge. Um, you know, interesting layouts, especially here. Uh, so it was, uh, that was actually really good for a short comic. Uh, this guy right here is, you know, what I have to say about it is it was, uh, it was a pretty good story. It's all, it's all told with a almost gibberish sort of, uh, talking, or at least as far as I know, I guess there's a chance because they are, you know, they say costs, new costs or something. So it's either a made up language or something like that, but it's definitely not a regular language. And what I would tell people is this is. What's happening here is similar to what I'm doing when I'm, you know, reading um, books that are not in English in languages that I've really just pre-intermediate, intermediate in at best, you know. Um, so I know when this is written, when this is drawn and written by, this one is called uh, Chao Nu Mon Mon by Nate Neal. Uh, Nate Neal obviously realizes that people aren't going to understand what people are saying here, and so you know, the art becomes a little bit more important uh, because it's still meant for anyone, <laughs> you know, to read. I guess anyone, not only English speakers here. Um, but typically that's what I'm doing when I'm reading in Spanish or Polish or when I'm looking through the Japanese books I bought from Japanese Book Hunter. Um, you know, I'm just not understanding completely, to be honest, at least text-wise. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm understanding to a certain amount, you know, that I've learned. Um, words that I maybe vaguely know, words that I need to see a few more times in, in context and action. That definitely happens here because he's not just doing gibberish. He's repeating certain phrases, na seal kas. Um, for a minute, I thought maybe it was backwards or, or jumbled or something. Um, and so if you were to read this, this is what I would, um, this is what I would say is what I'm doing essentially. Uh, maybe with a bit more, maybe with a bit more understanding, and then of course these other books uh, rely more that you understand the language, right? So I mean, it's almost like you need to be comfortable being in the dark to get this story. It looks like a revenge story here. You know, if the artist is really good, a lot of this is being drawn anyway, especially if it's panel, especially if it's happening in the panels and stuff. I know sometimes there's splash pages and things are explained or whatnot. So it's never perfect, but neither is language. You know, and it's always changing. And um, I still find a way to uh, find enjoyment and understanding and, and get a different perspective on it when I read in other languages. And that's and that's really what uh, Nate, I mean, I don't know that he was trying to do it. I don't know what the fuck he is trying to do. He might be on heroin or something right now. But that's really my, um, you know, that's really my sort of interpretation of, of this work, you know. So you're going to be in the dark a little bit. Uh, and then the artist's responsibility is is to tell a good story, you know. Um, but in this case, he knows no one's going to understand, so it's got to be a little bit clearer. Here's the T. Edward back book. I didn't really understand completely what was going on, but I do love his um, I do love his art style. It's almost like um, I mean, here it almost looks like uh, Noah Van Skyver doesn't, it? but. The rest of him doesn't, so I wouldn't say that it's anything like Noah Van Skyver. So he's got this weird, um, yeah, like his uh, his style or the themes he chooses are all nature, uh, all in the cold and the forest, uh, ocean. So it's very, it's not like tech feeling at all. Not that there isn't ever any tech in there or anything like that. But um, the the couple things I've read from him all have that feeling. So um, I, I enjoyed it. Didn't know what really was going on. It was something like, oh, you know. You should go get this for the story or anything. If I didn't know who T. Edward Back was or wasn't interested in him, this you know probably wouldn't have been up there. But this was the story of interest for me. And uh, here's my probably my favorite story in there, and that's that's being pretty nice, right? Because I've already talked up a bunch of stuff. Is um, not true story. This is Devil Doll Part Four. Rarely, rarely do I. I mean, I just don't care for horror. If it's if it is horror, it's got to give me something else, say Philadelphia, right? Something like that. Um, but I, I just love the art in here, and I and this is the people that love horror are open more to it. Um, 
you know, in a comic, you don't really get the jump scares so much, um, but it's all about tone and it's all about certain timing and stuff. And for me, that's what that this does here. In fact, I wish I had, this is the one where if I'm picking up moms in the future, I'll be looking to see if part two or three of this is in there. I really would like to see this on a larger page, on a big, you know, been nice if like Rust Belt Review had been doing it in this bigger, bigger setup here. Um, but geez, it was pretty good. I think I'm gonna, how long did this video go? 15 minutes on one book. Okay, yeah, um, we're not doing a five. Let's just call this the Mome. This is the Mome review. <laughs> so yeah, I have, I guess I'm just gonna have a lot of alt videos because not, I had Mome and I'm already 15 minutes in. I was supposed to do this one. I almost did this live, thank God I didn't. And then this 3T book, so I guess these are all gonna get their own videos. And then I wanted to anchor it with the Love and Rockets I just read since it was fresh in my head. This way I could be like, Love and Rockets and other alt comics and stuff, so. But I guess I'm not gonna do it. We're just gonna do Moam, and we're gonna cut it off here. So, a Moam flip through. Thank you guys very much.